What's going on guys, The Inhuman Beatdown, and I'm here with another Real Thoughts. This is the series where I do a more in-depth look at a series that I've already covered, and today we're digging way, way, way back to my original starting point to one of the first games I Let's Played, and that is Mega Man X Command Mission. Now, aside from the fact that uh, this Let's Play hasn't exactly aged well, mostly because I myself have become I'd say more competent and more outgoing, more carefree since those times, but we're not here to discuss my, uh, my style changes or how better, how better, clearly speaking, has not gotten better over the time, um, how much more I've improved since then, but if you are interested in checking out the LP, you have been warned, it is very old. Um, <laughs> that said, though. So, for me, Mega Man X Command Mission, which is a, a turn-based RPG based on the Mega Man X license, uh, is a bit of a guilty pleasure. Now, I know it's not what Mega Man fans are used to, of course, uh, but I think that's where actually I benefit from. I'm not particularly a Mega Man fan. I'm not, not, not really a fan of the whole franchise as it were despite the fact that I played several of them but most of those were against my will so yeah anyways but I do enjoy a good RPG every now and then and well you may question the validity of good we'll get to that eventually so first things first basically the game starts off with excuse me X and Zero and a new character by the name of Shadow hunting down a maverick by the name of Epsilon. And after some discovery and realizing he's awoken some other mavericks, he starts what he calls the Rebellion. A basic super conglomerate of mavericks for independence, blah, 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 blah. Shadow turns uh, traitor on the team and blasts Zero away, and X is left to do solo for a while. Along the way, he teams up with several other characters, including a bounty hunter named Spider, a big man who has some self-confidence issues named Massimo, even though he is not the real Massimo, um, a thief named Marina, a white mage named Cinnamon, who has a force metal generator in her chest. That's important lore-wise. Um, of course, the shape-shifting Axel, and of course, reunited with the Maverick Hunter, Zero. There are several twists and turns, kind of, along the way, that are pretty interesting, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Go stop the evil Maverick. There are some, there's some mini-plot usually going on in the mission, such as Massimo's determination and his willingness to help others. Um, that's the sound of me moving my mic. Uh, what is it? Marna is trying to, like, steal some treasure and stuff, but then it's all like, you know, the rebellion is bad, I should kick their asses. Cinnamon's very kind of innocent, but even she's like, I have to stand and fight kind of stuff. Basic, very, very basic kind of stuff. I think the only time that the game ever gets pretty heavy is spoilers, if you haven't seen it. This is kind of like an after review, so I don't know why you'd be watching this if you haven't seen the game. Uh, when Spider basically sacrifices himself to kill a Maverick, uh, because the place is about to explode, he just kind of, like, blows himself up, which is kind of, uh, you know, you kind of feel bad for a minute, and then, uh, feel bad for it, because Spider, Spider's been with you since about the beginning of the game, and you really kind of got to grow to feel for him, and I kind of wish the other characters had that, had that trait, too, because... One problem I had was, despite it being an RPG where you're encouraged to use, uh, like, all the characters and stuff like that, the moment I got Axel and Zero, who you get in the same, uh, chapter, I never once switched out of them except maybe once to pull out Cinnamon to heal my boys. Afterwards, though, those three just stayed together forever because I never needed the others for reasons I'll go into later. But yeah, uh, also different from normal Mega Man X, uh, Sigma was not the secret bad guy this time. Instead, actually, it's Colonel Redips who had been telling uh, 
X what to do all along, but secretly he just wanted this ultra powerful force medal so that he could declare independence. And since he's also a military type, he says, oh yeah, X has gone rogue, we should probably stop him. And uh, yeah, that's an actual interesting twist. What's even more of a twist is that, uh, is that he, he also then shows that he has kind of the same uh, transformation ability that Axel has and reveals he was actually Spider. This is actually something that's kind of foreshadowed if you know how to look. Uh, for first of all, Red Ips is Spider spelled backwards. Or Spider is Red Ips spelled backwards, depending on what you want. Spider is never present during any of the communications that X has with uh, Colonel Red Ips. And in fact, they try to highlight this at one point when Axel sees like the transformation light and sees uh, Spider come out of it. But they don't really push it too hard. It They leave a lot of it for you to understand. And then afterwards, Red Ips is defeated, and I guess everyone lived happily ever after, I guess? I don't know. Mechanics for the game are pretty simple, though. It's basically turn-based strategy with a little bit of a twist. You basically get a super meter that builds up every turn that allows you to pull off an ultimate. For X, this is his charge buster, which allows him to hit everyone. Zero can do a series of attacks to cut people. Axel gets really old school and basically turns into bosses you've defeated for different elemental attacks. It's kind of like uh, like actual Mega Man where you get to like you know take the boss's power, except in here you literally take the boss's form and use one of their attacks, which is pretty neat and pr actually pretty useful if you don't want to like weigh yourself down with elemental powers, which is exactly why I kept him on my team. Um, as well as that, you get sub gauges, which allow you to basically use just little mini attacks uh, at the ex at the cost of energy bar, like at the uh, cost of your super, for lack of a better word. Uh, a case in point, X can fire off, like, if you have equipped to them, they can all have, like, different things equipped. So this is just a bare minimum, like, explanation. Get, like, two, uh, two missiles attached where it's, like, one can melt shields, one can, like, lower defenses or stuff like that, so it's easier to hurt a person. Zero can apply, like, after images where he does multiple attacks instead of just the one. Um, I can't think what I ever put on Axel. <laughs> Sub-tanks can be used to heal people in battle. That's basically your way of regener of uh, using, like, healing items. I think there are actually... Actually, are there actually standard healing items away from the sub-tank? I don't think there is. Huh. Anyways. Uh, and aside from that, the last thing you have is, like, the super mode, which basically puts uh, puts every character inside of a aforementioned super state where they're harder, better, faster, stronger, and in some cases take on different properties or different attacks. A prime example, X can become X-Fire, which now no longer does a, like, AoE attack with the Charge Buster, but he does a single, a single attack where he just kind of, like, charges the Buster into a person's body. He also now has, like, electricity on his hand. Um, Zero just becomes Black Zero. It's not really that interesting. Axel and Spider have interesting things where they kind of go invisible, and they're basically immune to everything. Unfortunately, that means everything. So I keep accidentally trying to heal Axel during this, but he's immune to healing during it. He's immune to everything. But that also kind of makes him the ultimate um, kind of healer then, because since he can't be affected by anything, he can just stay around and use that until, uh, until it runs out. Which they do run out, and you don't get them replenished unless you use items or leave the area, I think it is. Yeah, that sounds about right. But they're incredibly powerful, especially if you go for the two hidden ones, which give X the ultimate armor, which is strap him with guns, missiles, rockets, and everything else, and that's the ultimate armor. And, oh, uh, what? I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically like this vampire thing for Zero, which allows him to do incredible damage and ice powers. I'm kind of sad, though, that they're the only two that get it. And, like I said... And unfortunately, um, as far as I can remember, like, with X's thing about the X-Fire changing his ultimate, as far as I know, he's the only one that does that. Everyone else in your party, like, all their stuff stays the same. As a prime example, Massimo just turns gold. Marna just turns... I, I actually forget what color she turns. Huh. She wasn't even the one I was going to say first. Uh, Cinnamon just turns, like, her dress turns black. It, it's really kind of very bare-bones kind of stuff. 
And Spider, like I said, goes invisible like Axel does. Also, I'm not a fan of Spider's, uh, like, super, because then it involves playing poker and... I guess technically... Yeah, no, poker. Yeah, I was gonna say, because straights and flushes and all that does different things and blah, 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 blah. Anyways. I do enjoy the mechanics of the game. It is nice to play. Um, but it's definitely not winning any awards anytime soon. It's very bare minimum when it comes to being an RPG. Um, there are some neat little sections, like, where you find, like, busted down enemy robots and you can take them back and they can explore areas, get you new items and stuff like that. That's actually the way you get the key to access these locked off areas in previous missions that will get you to the two secret bosses to get said armors I just mentioned. And the secret bosses aren't too bad if you know how to deal with them. Duckbill Mole I always find is the easiest one to deal with. And afterwards you get like, um, you get fucking Zero's ultimate armor from that, which then just gives you a leg up to fight, um, I don't remember the other one, the Belladonna, I can't remember her name, um, and that's, uh, who I find is a little bit harder than the other ones, but as long as you're properly leveled, you'll be fine, which is kind of like the theme of the game, as long as you're not doing something really stupid, like taking underleveled characters or fucking, um, not equipping properly and stuff like that. You'll be perfectly fine in this game. It's by no means super challenging. Unless you want to do the other secret boss at the end. Nine Tails. He's not too hard if you know what you're doing. But yeah. Uh, I do enjoy this game and I had fun with it. Others may not have as much fun. Especially if you are a fan of the Mega Man X formula. Mega Man, Mega Man X. Honestly, what's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? One of them is more depressed than the other. Anyways. But, yeah. That's going to be it for now, guys. So, until next time, I'll catch you all later. Asta.